Hello again, welcome back to IndyCar on the, what is it, the 3rd of July today. Um, you probably have seen in the papers today that uh, uh, there's been the result of a new Comres poll published in the National Today, which puts independent support ahead of the anti-independence campaign for the first time in as many months. Now, it's only 51%, so it's 1% above where it was before, basically, and uh, that's not really enough. But it's interesting that it's happened now. Many of us, especially uh, commentators like myself, have been saying for many months that there will not be a real rise in their support for independence until we get a date. Now we have a firm date of the 19th of October next year. It's really focused people's attention on the actual issue of independence and how vital it is for Scotland if we wish to survive the coming crisis which has been engineered by the Tory party. So it's beginning to look as if people are waking up and we're starting to see a movement in the, the polls. Now, bear in mind that these polls, which are, are, are basically the same polling companies all the time doing the same polls, asking the same question of about a thousand people supposedly selected at random, but really selected from various demographic groups to represent a cross-section of the Scottish population. And certain votes are weighted more than others. There are calculations involved. Now, the polling companies are obviously paid by the newspapers to produce these polls. And most of the polls that we see are produced by unionist supporting newspapers. So you might expect that the figures would probably never really move very much because basically the newspapers don't want them to move very much. They want to show it as a dead heat. And there's a tendency within uh, the British political elites, especially the, um, the, shall we say, the English as British nationalists, their elite, their political elite, um, in claiming that there's no appetite for independence in Scotland because of these opinion polls, except that democracy is not run on opinion polls. Opinion polls are just basically a, a rough guide produced by polling companies who phone round the same several thousand people basically every time. I mean, they'll have, you know, a, a list of several thousand respondents to choose from, but basically they're asking the same groups of people the same question over and over again and getting pretty much the same result, which is exactly what Albert Einstein said was the definition of insanity. However, as... Um, as Paul Kavanagh pointed out in his Ginger Doug column earlier on today, Britain is not a democracy based on opinion polls. Some argue that it's not a democracy at all. But to argue that there is no appetite for independence is rubbish, because Scotland has elected a pro-independence government for the last three terms. And this time, it's actually elected a pro-independence government by the largest margin ever. This is the biggest uh, vote for independence parties in the Scottish Parliament that there's ever been, since certainly since Alex Salmond's time. So the mandate is there. The date has been set. The, uh, the question has been set. We know what the... Uh, franchise is meant to be, including everyone over the age of 16, and including EU nationals who settled in Scotland as well. So that is all fine and good. Now, the, the First Minister, as you know, has, has uh, referred the whole matter of the so-called legality of independence referendums being uh, legislated by the Scottish Parliament to the British Supreme Court to get a ruling on it. And I've mentioned a, few, a good few times now that there may be a block there. They might decide in the, in the court that we can't have a referendum. However, it's interesting to note that Alex Salmond, the leader of the ALBA party, is unusually, I think, amongst uh, independence leaders of the opinion that a Section 30 order will be signed. And I think that's an interesting insight because Mr. Salmond is not given to making statements which he's not confident about. He's known for, um, for being bold enough to support his assertions and go for it. And I think he wouldn't say that unless he was confident that never mind whether there's a court ruling or not, but he seems to be confident that the British state would rather 
sign a Section 30 order and take part in a referendum, then risk losing to us at a general election, where they're almost certain to lose because they've lost the last few elections to the SNP, uh, most notably in 2015, where we swept the board with almost all of the seats, 56 out of the 59. Now, if we were to do that feat again, it would be relatively easy to count the votes and find that we had a majority for independence, and I don't think they really want that. So it looks very likely, I think, that um, both Nicholas Sturgeon and Alex Salmond in their own ways seem unusually confident in the fact that there will be an independence referendum with a Section 30 order so that the Tories don't have to risk losing at a general election or risk losing at a referendum which is lawful but at which they are not actually present because they haven't signed a Section 30 order. Now, he's talking of polls reminds me of something else. Now, there's been a lot of activity on our streets recently by various Yes campaign groups across Scotland, and they're seeing a lot more support on the streets of Scotland uh, for independence. We're also seeing a massive rise in the number of desperate trolls coming onto these pages and trying to call everybody names. All of these things are an indication of the desperation of the Better Together Two campaign, which hasn't even launched itself anyway, and uh, which has no new arguments in favour of the union. So basically, the unionist side of this argument is left with all the old lies that they told the last time around, and nothing new. On the other hand, there has been another poll which was published by the Glasgow Herald recently, and this is supposedly a poll of 16,000, over 16,000 uh, Glasgow Herald readers asking the question, will you vote for independence? And the interesting result was that 82% of that 16,000 who responded said yes, they wanted independence. So a very tiny minority of 12% of um, <laughs> of Glasgow Herald readers actually wants independence, uh, actually, sorry, opposes independence, and 82% want it, which is fascinating considering that the Glasgow Herald is a rabidly anti-independence paper and goes to great lengths to try and rubbish all talk of independence for Scotland. Now, Dominic Rabb, as you know, last week um, gave ammunition to the independence cause inadvertently by agreeing with uh, an SNP MP's claim that Scotland had the vast majority of the United Kingdom's natural resources under its ownership. And Rabb acknowledged this and said that this was an argument for keeping the union together that we were stronger together. But who was he referring to when he said we are stronger together? Well, it's obviously England, because Scotland would be a lot stronger apart, because we wouldn't have to give all of these resources to England so that they can sell them off and use the money for wherever they want, leaving us with virtually nothing. We are supposed to have at least, at least, eight point something percent of the revenues from these from the sale of our assets basically by the English state and yet we never really seem to see any of it. Anyway, to cut back to the chase, the the independence polls as they are at the moment are showing a slight rise and I would anticipate there will be dozens of these polls bombarding us for the next 14 months and in these polls we will see a rise in support for independence because people are terrified of what is coming in the next winter. When you're faced with a bill for £3,500 for gas and electricity this winter, who are you going to blame for that? Is it the fault of the SNP? No, it's not. It can't be because they don't control energy policy. Is it the fault of the SNP that inflation is rising? No, because it's the British government which has uh, full powers over the economy and the way the economy is run. Is it the fault of the SNP that there isn't enough benefit support and welfare support for people on the lowest incomes during this crisis? No, it's not, because they have a tiny, tiny proportion of the benefit spending and the tax revenues that are actually due to Scotland. Most of that is the responsibility of the British state. So it's very hard for anyone looking at this dispassionately, even those who formerly maybe didn't support independence, to look at it and say it's definitely the fault of the SNP that we're in this difficulty. Of course it isn't. It can't be. The SNP is trying desperately um, to support people in the most need, but it can't because it doesn't have the powers to do so. It can't change the tax rules. It cannot give more benefits. 
It cannot export because of Brexit. It has no control over foreign policy because that's reserved and so on and so on and so on. If the British state uh, and its Supreme Court decide that we can't vote to leave this union, then as I've mentioned many times, it's not a voluntary union. And that means we're a colony. And if we're a colony, we need to decolonize and get out of this treaty straight away. <clears throat> and I've also mentioned many, many times that this union that we are so allegedly voluntarily staying in wasn't voluntarily entered into. There was no democracy, there was no mass referendum in 1707 asking the people if they wanted Scotland to be a part of Greater England as the United Kingdom. We weren't asked that. Only a small number of nobles and wealthy individuals who were bribed and coerced and scared into doing it signed that treaty. So under any modern scrutiny the whole issue of the Union Treaty being voluntary just dissolves because it never ever came up to the modern standard of democratic proof necessary for a voluntary union of this kind. So that just begs the question, will it happen? Well, if Alex Salmon and Nicholas Sturgeon think that a Section 30 order will be signed, I'm pretty sure that it's going to because politicians very rarely do anything which is going to fail. I mean, they, they don't announce things that they expect to fail at doing. There is nothing happens by accident in politics. All of these things will have been planned out years in advance. And the, the legal sort of processes aside, given the fact that this, this decision about whether a, a non-sanctioned referendum can be held in Scotland being referred to the um, the Supreme Court. It's also unlikely that the Supreme Court could rule that it was unlawful for the Scottish Parliament to have a consultative democratic event asking people's opinions of the Union because it's basically just a giant opinion poll and it's voluntary. People don't have to take part if they don't want and they can freely take part if they do want. They can oppose it if they want to and they can support it if they want to. There's nothing nothing coercive about it and it doesn't affect the Union in any way. It is just an indication, a consultation with the public to ask their opinion. And if you can't ask your public's opinion when you are the elected government of a country, then you don't live in a democracy at all, because the country next door decides whether you can actually leave the treaty. The Tories have said, many of them, including Sir David Frost and Boris Johnson and many others, have said that no country would enter into a union where it could not leave without the permission of the other state. Now, this is how they got out of the European Union, because that is a state where the European Union was not able to say to Britain that it couldn't leave. It was up to Britain to decide, and Britain did decide, and here we are out of the Union, whether we voted for it or not. So if it's sauce for the goose, as it were, then it's sauce for the gander. And if uh, the Supreme Court is to compare the Scottish independence referendum as, let us say, a consultative referendum, which all of them are anyway, then it's exactly the same rules for us as it was for the Brexit vote. If it was lawful for the UK to do it, then it is lawful for the Scottish Parliament to do it as well. Because the union we are leaving concerns us and England only, because we only signed a treaty with England. We didn't sign a treaty with Ireland, we didn't sign a treaty with Wales, it's only with England. And if Scotland decides in a democratic event that we don't like the union and we would like our politicians to negotiate our exit from it, then I think we should be allowed to say that. If we're denied that, then, as I say, we don't live in a democracy. We are basically living in a colony and we are living in a dictatorship, in which case we shouldn't be in it in the first place. If you have to ask permission to get out of a treaty, then it's not a democratic treaty and it isn't voluntary, and that is in itself a reason for leaving. Anyway, I anticipate that given the massive uh, spike, the 82% of Herald readers who want independence, I hope that gives the Herald editor a little bit of a pause, because the sister paper, The National, which supports independence, comes from the very same company, from the same news media company. And yet, the Glasgow Herald seems to exist as the devil's advocate. 
it has no other purpose. It just seems to want no independence at any cost. And remember that this referendum is not Nicola Sturgeon's referendum, as the British media would like everyone to believe, nor is it the SNP's referendum, nor is it the Greens' referendum or Alba's referendum. It's our referendum. We all voted for the parties who uh, pledged to hold the referendum, and we knew that we were voting for independence in the last elections, and we knew that, that the government that we were voting for would hold a referendum. So there is no question about the mandate and there is no question about it being Nicola's referendum or anyone else's. It's ours. We voted for it. And I think we have to remember that and correct every time the British press claim that it's Nicola Sturgeon's referendum or it's the SNP's referendum. I mean, the Daily Mail has been making hysterical headlines saying things like, um, Europe is ravaged by war. Why is Nicola Sturgeon wanting to have a referendum? Well, Europe isn't ravaged by war. Ukraine is ravaged by a war. And we are trying to help the Ukrainians to defend themselves and to assert their independence from a larger aggressive state. If it's good enough for Ukraine and the British government supports the independence of Ukraine against a larger aggressive state, then Boris Johnson then has to sign a Section 30 order and support Scotland's bid for independence from a larger, more aggressive state. In other words, the one he actually rules over. So again, it's a question of equivalence here. And I think the Supreme Court, looking at the way referendums have been done in the recent past, the Scottish referendum and the Brexit referendum, cannot say that the Scottish Parliament does not have exactly the same right to do what the English Parliament did in 2016. We have exactly the same right under the rules of democracy. If the British government denies that democracy, then it isn't a democracy. And that means that we should not be in it at all. I think that we are heading towards the 19th of October. I think we're going to vote anyway. And I think the British government is going to dither and it's going to panic uh, and it's going to vacillate and it's going to try everything in its power to deny us the democracy which we are owed as citizens, supposedly, of the democratic state of the UK, which we all know at the moment is very, very far from democratic as far as Scotland is concerned. So I guess that's really it today. But I think it's interesting to see two polls. Um, one from the Unionist Press, which is uh, a standard poll, which is showing 51% for, and uh, I think it was less than 48% against, if I remember correctly, because there are some don't knows in there. And then we have this Herald poll, which is not a standard poll, but is one where people uh, can voluntarily vote in it. And 82% of the 16,000 people who responded to the Herald's poll said they wanted independence. Really, I think that's an indication of just how strong feeling is in Scotland at the moment. And certainly that seems to be borne out by the response of people on the streets to, yes, stalls that have popped up in every town and city. And we're going to see more marching, we're going to see more rallies, we're going to see more speeches, there will be further announcements, and this referendum hasn't even really started yet. It hasn't got into first gear yet, and already we are seeing the polls climb. Anyway, that's about it for me today. I see we have over 250 live views today. Thank you very much for staying tuned. And as, of course, every time you watch this program, please share it to as many people as possible. If you share it to everybody on your list of friends and they share it to everyone on their list of friends, then by the time it's been shared two or three times like that, we've got over 100,000 shares easily. So keep sharing, but also share on multiple platforms. Share this or upload it to YouTube, upload it to um, LinkedIn, upload it to Twitter, anywhere else that you can find, upload these programs to it. Because we know that we're fighting the might of the British stock media, the, the regular media, the newspapers, the TV and the radio, none of which we control except for a single newspaper. Out of the dozens of newspapers that exist across this country, only one one exists that backs independence and yet its sister paper has a poll that shows 82% of people who read that paper want independence. It's fascinating stuff. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye for now.